just a little meal or like a meal. So it'll be interesting. Welcome one and all to the 2019 Bugfest Critter Cook-Off! Yes, it is time. Today we've got an exciting show for you. In anticipation of Bugfest 2019, which is tomorrow, September 21st from 9 to 7, right here in downtown Raleigh, this is your preview. We have two fabulous chefs who are going to be creating delicious appetizers, entrees, and desserts for our panel of celebrity guest judges. Chefs, are you ready? Let the battle begin! Here at the Museum of Natural Sciences, we invite every year two local chefs to come out and compete. Who can make the best buggy dishes? All of the food that they make today will feature insects. We've got mealworms, crickets, beetles. It ought to be very tasty, but if you're a little bit squeamish about eating insects, I think the food we'll get today is going to be just the thing you need to get over that and have a tasty treat. I want to start off by introducing our guest chefs, and we'll be going around throughout the show today to meet them, talk to them about their cooking philosophy, their experience cooking insects, and we'll meet our celebrity panel of guest judges. First off, cooking on my right, your left, is Chef Zwelly Williams. You can find her restaurant in Durham, Zwelly's Piri Piri Kitchen which I learned is the only Zimbabwean restaurant in the U.S. Really? So we ought to be getting some incredible tasty food there. And then back here on this side, we have Chef Kyle Fletcher. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> Cooking out of Y Hill Kitchen and Brewery, just down the road from the museum here in downtown Raleigh. So we're excited that these two could join us. And I want to introduce our celebrity guests. First off, closest to me, Caroline Blair, news anchor reporter for Spectrum News. Hi. Meteorologist Bill Ray for CBS 17. Karen Clark, midday personality for Foxy 107-104, Radio 1. That's right. Nigel Arms, director of research and development with BASF, a Bugfest sponsor. And then sitting at the end of the table, Deborah Morgan, news anchor and reporter for WRAL. Thanks to you all for being here. So, the cooking has begun. I'm gonna start down here with Chef Zwelly, who's got a pan full of colorful and tasty looking food going. Chef Zwelly, what have you got? So, right here we have our appetizer, and this is a very simple and light. Uh, we went with um, a Thai fusion lettuce wrap, which will, our protein, uh, the mealworms. A Thai fusion lettuce wrap with mealworms. And it looks like there's been a treatment on the mealworms. What did you do to the mealworms? So these are basically just roasted. Roasted in salt and pepper, olive oil, um, for a crunchy, crunchiness. <laughs> Judges, exactly. how do you feel yes. about that one? Super excited. Are they all ground up? <laughs> Yum. They, let's see, are they ground up? Nope, they're whole. So you can see exactly what you're about to eat. Well, I've eaten gummy worms before. <laughs> it's, it's a little different, slightly different. Okay. It's very similar, but different. All right. So are we expecting crunchy. them to still be crunchy or soft after cooking? So they have a little crunch. They have a little crunch to them. So this will add not only the crunch to the lettuce uh, cup, but also the protein to it. And what do you have in the pan here for the wraps? So in the pan, we have a whole bunch of veggies. We have some carrots. We have some bell peppers, scallions. We have some ginger. And we have some garlic as well. We're going to finish off with some mint and some cilantro. Ooh, yum. It, it smells really good over here. It sounds really say. good. It smells great. Chef Kyle, I'm going to come and visit you. We've got some plating going on. What do we have happening down here? We are working on a cricket crudo. Uh, we have a yellowfin sashimi uh, with some cinnamono cucumbers, uh, some local peppers, and then we're going to do a beer tempura fried uh, crickets. Beer tempura fried cricket. 
So can I borrow your crickets? So here we've got our crickets. I'm going to come in. Which camera can I come to? Right here. Here's our crickets. Now here in the US, people kind of are squeamish. Judges, any experience eating insects? Only here. Never. Only here at the Buck Best Critter Cook-Off. Never. What do you, here we go. I'm going to let y'all take a I look. Had, we ate worms yesterday. I have not had a cricket yet, Are those going to be covered with batter and just like pop them in with some dipping sauce or something? So. Chef Kyle, how'd you prepare your cricket? <laughs> Little crunchy bites to finish off the crudo. Okay. Of course. Well, and th what he hasn't told you yet is that earlier he was prepping a beetle juice. Because Ooh. why not? Ah. Right? Pre wait. A beetle juice? <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. <laughs> Don't say it three times. Don't say it three times. <laughs> and, the, and the crickets are in beer, so you can't go wrong with that. Right. Yeah, okay. Uh, right. Yeah, beer batter, okay. So three of our celebrity judges, Karen, Nigel, and Deborah, this is not your first Critter Cook-Off. No, no, not our first rodeo. Yeah. No. And I have to ask, what brings you to the Critter, critter Cook-Off each year? Like, why you go, oh, yeah, I want to eat some bugs. I haven't had those in a while. It's the most fascinating, unusual, fun thing that I do all year. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, because I, I almost couldn't come, and I was very upset. Oh, yes. So I was like, please make room for me, because I really want to come back. But it's just the dishes are so good. I appreciate all the creativity of the chefs and just admire what they can do. And it is something that bugs are eaten all around the world, and we do get squeamish around here, so I think it's fun to be able to um, freak out all my friends that I can do this and they won't do it. <laughs> oh yeah, I agree. Because uh, I've been talking about the cook-off online and the museum's been chatting about it. And it's great to see the comment threads mm -hmm. on all the social media because everybody goes, did you, did you really eat that? <laughs> on purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You did that right, on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we did it on purpose. And, and um, you know, we bring the chefs in, and it's really good food yeah. every single right. year. We've never had anything that we didn't want more never. of later. Right. Never. It smells yeah. amazing. Mm -hmm. And I we know, don't really Caroline's get a chance to do the to iron chef awesome. thing in real life. So this is the closest most of us are going to get to the Iron Chef competition because mm. it's very similar True. to that. I get to live out my inner Alton Brown. Right, exactly. In this role. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, and I think the great thing is that there's always something different new to try each year. So this year, we're looking forward to the Beatles. That's something different. I don't know, the looking forward Beatles. to, Nigel. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Strong, well, wording, to. strong wording there, well, Nigel. Well, it's, 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 kind of it's kind of the boasting you can do afterwards. You know, remember when we had dragonflies? Dragonflies, dragonflies were good. Was challenge. Scorpions, we've did had. Did you ever eat yeah. roaches, the kind I kill in my house? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so we well, don't have that this I must have opted out that year. Every year I get an email from Karen that says, what's the theme insect? <laughs> because if it's a roach. I'm not <laughs> or spiders. I, I have a, I don't have, I'm not arachnophobic, but I get those big Carolina wolf spiders in oh, my I house. The those. ones that carry the babies on their backs. They're fabulous. I don't want to see that on a plate. <laughs> it freaks me out in the house. I don't want to see it on a plate. Keep that in nature. Yes. So what's the difference just for education purposes between like the common roach that I kill in my house and a beetle? Because I thought they were similar families. I could be totally wrong. I'm not a, a bug, -a, bug -ologist, but We are a bug a bugologist. Yeah. We are very fortunate on our celebrity guest panel. Yes. Oh, yeah. Nigel, Nigel Arms right. has That's a correct. PhD yes. in entomology. <laughs> oh. So, and this is right. his kind of question. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, so I know so, some, in some areas they actually call cockroaches beetles. They call them like water bugs mm -hmm. and water beetles, but they're not. Um, so cockroaches belong to the order of called Dictyoptera, and, uh, which includes things like um, praying mantises, uh, cockroaches, some other things. <laughs> beetles are, com are completely different. So beetles is, is the most diverse insect group. They belong to the Coleoptera. Um, but me as an entomologist, I will eat a beetle, but I would not want to okay. eat a cockroach, mm. based on what cockroaches eat right. yeah. and where you find them. <laughs> That's very validating yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to hear the entomologist say it. <laughs> so does that mean we're never going to have cockroaches then? Because the expert says uh, that he wouldn't want to do it. I wouldn't want to eat a cockroach. Not, not the one from my garage. Or, <laughs> oh, no, probably not on one of those. Morning, I want to eat that. <laughs> Well, what's really interesting is here in the U.S., and for the critter cook-off, I should say, the, the mealworms that we use, the crickets and the beetles, these have all been farmed. Mm -hmm. And then, so we purchase them off of farms where they're, 
you know, raised ethically, and so we're actually sourcing them for edible insects, mm -hmm. rather than going out with nets, you know, around downtown Raleigh, oh, <laughs> and, that's a really and catching as much as we can for the cook-off. Which means that uh, if we could get edible cockroaches, you know, there's no real reason why not. In fact, yeah. I was listening just this morning to a story where they were talking about cockroach milk. There's a species of cockroach that produces a sugary substance that it feeds its young, its milk, and they say it tastes pretty much like cow's milk and may actually be more nutritious. They're Look for that on your uh, next grocery run. Yeah. How many would it take to actually make a cup? How many cockroaches do you have to know? I have no idea. I don't think I, you won't find it in the U.S., I think, just yet. But uh, right, right. it's one of these things that's on the rise because eating insects as sustainable sources of food mm -hmm. is on the rise. Mm -hmm. As we're seeing global trends like climate change, uh, you know, reduce the, the yields that we can get from mm -hmm. crops right. and also for meat production, crops that are raised for meat production and meat production itself has a huge environmental impact. What are ways that we can manage the soon to be 10 billion people that will live on this planet mm -hmm. and make sure everybody gets to eat? Insects are a great source of sustainable protein and fiber. Do they make chocolate cockroach milk? Because then, you know, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. You add chocolate to anything. You know, That's right. It's not that bad. You probably have to squeeze a lot of the cockroaches. When I heard about it, they said it, it, it sort of looks like silver glitter. So, uh, huh. Silver I'm, glitter? Yeah, like a silver glittery wow. substance. So I'm really interested to learn more about it. Um, but I'm going to come back in and check in with our chefs. Because it looks like our appetizers are just about done. Are we ready to serve these up? Let's get started. Anything you need to tell our judges? Uh, so we are coming over with a little bit of a pour over as well as the appetizer. Um, and that pour over will be our yes. beetle juice. Thank you. Great. Beetle juice. Awesome. Okay. Thank you so much. Oh, wow. It looks beautiful. Oh, okay, so wait, okay. Is this mine or am I taking yours? I'll ask him for some. Oh, this is, yes. Oh, well, it's I'll just beautiful. use this napkin, so, okay. Judges, what do we think? I guess we've got it's to switch beautiful. it along. The presentation is yeah. unbelievable. And of course, we have to take a picture. Oh, hold on one second. Yeah, everybody's going to take their Instagram photos. Oh, my goodness. Get that good boomerang of the sauce getting, the beetle juice getting poured over. That is beetle this, this is beetle juice. juice. Do you want to get it over my shoulder when he pours it over? It's, mm. it's wine. You're lying to me. It's wine. <laughs> oh, well, there's wine? Well, it looks like just beetle tell yourself it's wine. That's what I'm saying. I know. Wow. Excellent. I think we need chopsticks. Oh, wow. <laughs> the first bite went in. All right. All right. Mm. You can eat the both first. Right, now, um, yeah, you go for the tempura first. The tentacle. While our judges are tasting, uh, I want to let everybody know the rules for this year's Critter Cook-Off. One, all the dishes do have to have insects. They're cooking with mealworms, crickets, and beetles. And we got extra special beetles from Southeast Asia, in fact. They're enormous June beetles. Yeah, take a look at these. What do you think? It's delicious, Kyle. Mm. This is actually really good. Mm -hmm. If you take your head out of it. <laughs> It's delicious. I got gutsy and just tried the beetle first, and it's really, really good by itself. You want to have a cricket? You can't tell. Like, there's no kind of no. No? gamey, gritty sure. taste. It's delicious. So just a great fulfilled. This is a great introduction to insect eating because you can't even see it. So yeah, right. I like that. I, I, I'm just telling myself it's little... Camouflage. Yes. Beer-battered really pieces of... Beer-battered crickets. Oh, Chef Kyle, tell us... You called it beetle juice. What did you, what, what's in the, the sauce there? So we took our um, house pickled red cabbage uh, and then roasted some of the beetles, oh, steeped mm. the beetles yeah, into that uh, liquid, um, almost like a tea, wow. and then seasoned that with some Thai chilies, some chili flake, um, and some other acidity. Finish what it all off. What was the hot pepper we just got? So this I don't know. Red, I got a red one. <laughs> I think it's in the sauce. Is it the red the one? The Thai chili? Mm -hmm. It was the Thai chili, I think. It was good. Oh, wait, Chef, Chef Kevin? It does. Uh, it's a uh, smoked sweet pepper, but it does have a little bit of kick because it's smaller yeah. from Ronnie Moore's farm in the farmer's market. So we took those and we smoked them at the restaurant, and I literally grabbed those last minute on the way out. I was like, I don't know. I think I'm going to need these today. Yeah. So. 
All right, I'm here with Bill Ray. What yeah. do you think? Getting really, That's getting smiles from the judges panel. Audience, I'm, what do you it's think? It's shocking to good. say that it's I mean, the bite is better really with the beetle. I'm shocked to say that it's better with the beetle. I think the sauce takes it to the yeah. next level. Yeah. And the fact that the, the crickets are fried, because we're Southern. Yes. Yeah. And you know, you can't go wrong with anything fried. I mean, go to the state fair. That's what we love. Mm -hmm. Fried insects should be the next big thing. It should be. We, we should, should get be. that started. We should do that. Hashtag insects at the state fair. Just That's too long of a hashtag. Cream donuts between that and you got it. Yep. Boom. Everybody will want one. Chef Zwei, can we serve up your? There's more to come. I know. Okay, Pace I'm going to stop. Yes. Well, yeah. actually, I am making myself stop because this is really good. It's really yeah. good. Questioning in the takeout box. I know. <laughs> yeah, my eight-year-old would love to see my leftovers in the refrigerator. <laughs> no. <laughs> he doesn't like to see our regular leftovers in the refrigerator, let alone this. Uh-oh. Beautiful. Goodness. Do we have any more utensils? Oh, how beautiful. Oh, wow. Mm, oh, wow. So, Chef Zwelli, any, any words on the appetizer we just served out to our judges? So, it, uh, just a simple uh, Thai side lettuce wrap, very light uh, appetizer, and the mealworm in it is uh, roasted with uh, salt and pepper and some olive oil. So, it's a very light, crunchy, uh, tasty appetizer. How do you eat it? Bon appetit. You just pick, can I pick it up and eat it with my hand? <laughs> okay, that's what I thought. All right. All right. All right, Bill, I've got you doing this. All right. Let's see it. It looks like rice pilaf, so we'll see. Mmm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm telling the, you, this stuff smells great. The touch great. of the you, mint the is mint just is everything. amazing. The mint like takes wow. it to the next level. It really does. Uh, well, here's so the other good. thing. Dropping you could give this to everybody in here, and if you never mentioned the word bugs, you would no. never know there's a bug no. in here. I mean, it does look like rice, the little long rice. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm telling myself. Yeah. Tell my brain. <laughs> well, no, no, actually, the, the bugs are like the seaweed strips you get, mm -hmm. the Japanese. Yeah. Now, which worms were these? These were the super worms? Okay. Yeah, these were really our roasted, good. may I? Oh my goodness. So here's what we've got going on in your lettuce wraps. This is way better than yesterday. Wait, I ate that? <laughs> you ate that? <laughs> Those are bigger than mine. You were just chewing I like how so you hard. shrunk that's, them down. That's yeah. <laughs> That was really good. Mm -hmm. Do you cook with insects a lot in Zimbabwe? Uh, we have mopane worms. And mopane worms are much bigger. They're green. You have to squeeze the stuff out of them first, dry them, and you can saute them. Um, you can boil them, but they're really, really delicious. Are those and we the ones that taste like peanut butter? No. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know what I can say. No. They taste, they taste, they're a little nutty. A little a nutty? Little nutty, but they're very flavorful mm. and delicious. Mm. So you said they were called Mopani worms? Mopani worms. Mopani worms. Uh, how do you, do you just, are they in the markets? Do folks go out and collect them? They're everywhere. Because you're able to, they're, you can also roast them. You're able to eat them as a snack, pretty much. It's a crunchy, just like uh, the one, the one, the way that we prepared them today, just a crunchy roasted snack. Yes. So I would go get a bag of potato chips. You would go get a bag of, of mopane worms. That's incredible. 
So one of the things that I've learned um, from doing this over the years is that the bug part isn't really that hard. It's the, it's the leg part. Mm. It's the legs, especially like the crickets, because the legs can get kind of caught in your teeth. <laughs> and then the year we did dragon wing, I mean yeah, dragon yeah, flies, the, I think the, the wings. wings. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's the nice hardest part. So if yeah. you took the cricket and pulled the legs off of it, or, or took the dragonflies and pulled the wings off, it, it's right. fine. Yeah. It's fine. The trouble is the dragonfly, take the wings off, there's not much dragonfly left, is there? Right. It's nearly all wing. Right. You're right. You're right. I didn't feel like this had, you couldn't really taste the worms. Nope. Mm -mm. We're so much nice. flavor in there. <laughs> right. <laughs> we're supposed to be judging. <laughs> I kind of feel like we're cheating because we can't taste the bugs. <laughs> so you're like, more bugs. We need more bugs. Make it more bugs. Nigel wants more bugs. <laughs> I remember <laughs> one year. I'm waiting for the Beatles. <laughs> one year Mama Dip made a chocolate chess pie. Do yes, you remember that? Remember With that. ants? Yep. And it gave it a lemony taste. Mm -hmm. So you actually did taste the ants as this lemony taste in the chess pie. The ants are that great. That was kind of cool. The ants have a defense mechanism that it, they use an acid that they produce called formic acid that keeps them from being eaten by predators. But when you cook them up, formic acid is an acid like a lemon, so you get that little tartness that comes with it. That was something. This is great. I love what's going down. How long did it take the judges to come up with these recipes? Like, how much experimenting did you do? Chef Zwelly. Oh, it took a lot of experimenting on the beetles. Um, they were different, most definitely. But otherwise, the worms were not that complicated um, because you can have them so simple, um, like a snack, pretty much. You don't mm -hmm. have to do much to them. But the beetles are a different story. Chef Kyle, prepping for cooking bugs. So it was tough. We actually started with, uh, kind of started with our names. Uh, we wanted to go with a lot of puns. So cricket, crudo, um, beetle juice, <laughs> pesto. Um, so we kind of started there and then developed what we were going to do around that. Um, so the beetle juice became the liquid component of the ceviche. Um, the pesto is a part of our roulade. Um, and then the cricket crudo, obviously, we had those fried crickets on there. Um, so we just started playing with that, and then it was kind of tasting things around and seeing what worked and what didn't, and going from there. Is this Did your you first time cooking with bugs? It very much is. Uh -huh. Yes, this was, uh, it was a fun experience, though. Um, How many really bugs cool. did you eat as you were trying to prepare these recipes? More than I try to think about. <laughs> it was a lot. Raw, roasted, fried them. Um, yeah. What were your least favorites, or at least your one least favorite? That beetle is tough. Um, it's just got a lot of bitterness to it. It's kind of chewy. You get the tough legs and the wings. It was oh a tough boy. one to work around, That's but I think we managed to incorporate uh, it. You're really it's selling it there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we hope, hopefully we transformed it. You guys will be able to taste that flavor profile, but not have a lot of that negative. <laughs> you did say hope. You can didn't I, say can I grab one of these meals? No. No. Now, is it weird for me to complain that there's a gnat that keeps flying around my food? <laughs> or do it. I just eat it? I'll let that go? I mean, you can probably, you know, just let it land and then eat it. Oh. This, it's a critter cook-off. Okay. That, that's an insect protester. That is, is that what that is? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this is the, here's the beetle that our chefs are preparing today. It's in the genus Phylophagia. It's very light. Mm -hmm. They've been... <laughs> Yourself, Before the chefs got them, they were salted and dehydrated. Oh, that's why they're so light. All right, so there there's no insides. I'm just looking at my fellow judges, and I think I'm the only one that needs water. <laughs> I am here to serve. Here Nobody else has touched their water. Thank you. Oh, Facebook Live, can I start? This, is, this is lunch today. <laughs> that was pepperoni pizza day. <laughs> it looks like at this moment, we are halfway, halfway, everybody, through the Bugfest Critter Cook-Off. Give it up for our chefs. So, is, Chef Zwelly, you brought help with you. You have your sous chef, sous chef, BJ Satterwhite. BJ, thanks for being here. How do you enjoy cooking insects? Um, it's a different experience, but I do enjoy cooking so much that it's just 
kind of like a, just a different type of medium for me to work with. So I'm happy that I'm able to be a part of it and I hope everybody enjoys what we are able to prepare. I love it. Was this your first time cooking insects? Uh, officially, yes. I've done it for fun, but not on a serious note. So, you know. Oh, cool. So do you remember what you prepared just for fun or were you just sort of popping them raw? I actually made like a my version of a nightcrawler alfredo like with the worms and wow. stuff so i did that made the sauce from from scratch and all that so uh i had to pay some people to try it but <laughs> they actually didn't um react to it the way i thought so that it was actually better than i thought it would be oh that's great so this team's stacked over here they've cooked insects chef Zwelly from zimbabwe you grew up eating insects I think uh, when you and I chatted before that Thank you had told me, I think your mother actually cooked insects and yes. you learned a little bit <laughs> about preparing food from her, is that right? Yes, um, I come from a family of uh, people that love uh, to okay. cook. So um, I've watched my mother cook. She's still teaching me how to make different recipes uh, from Zimbabwe. So um, I embrace the cultural cuisine and I just learn you know, from her. I think it must be working because Zwelly's Kitchen in Durham was voted by readers of the Indie Week as the best new restaurant in Durham County Ooh. for 2019. Awesome. Congratulations. <laughs> I think it was also one of the top five restaurants, Triangle from Eater.com and Best Chicken Wings, is that what you told me? Best Chicken Wings in Durham by the Indie Week. So now, will you all be incorporating any of these recipes into your menus moving forward, or is this a one-off? Chef Kyle? For us, this will probably be a one-off. Okay. <laughs> uh, um, we'll probably, we'll always do things like crudos and uh, real odds, and panna cotta will be our dessert. Um, but I think we'll, we'll leave the bugs out of those. <laughs> Not sure that the, the Raleigh socialite crowd is quite up for the insects yet? I mean, maybe a good off-menu item, just off-menu might be good. There Call, you go, yeah, just every now and seasonal. then. Seasonal. Yeah. Call Greg Cox from the News and Observer, see if he'll come over and, right. and, <laughs> and review those dishes. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be the day. Yeah, it'd be great to have him though. So if you're listening, Greg, you should stop by, check us out. <laughs> I wonder what the sanitation department would think about that. Like, like, no, those are supposed to be here. <laughs> right, yeah. We want they, these They bugs. open the freezer and it's full <laughs> <Right>. of bugs. <laughs> no. But they're in these things, I guess, which is a little, that makes yeah. it look nicer, doesn't it? A little it? intimidating. Did you want this one back? Purposeful, purposeful. That's yours, Deborah. That's, oh, that's I get yours to take now. it home? Okay, thank you. So that's a really big beetle on the roasting pan there. Oh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Audience, did you want to take a look at our, uh, our theme insect? So for Bugfest 2019, the theme critter are beetles. Beetles represent the largest group of insects out there. Something like 400,000 species of beetle exist on Earth. Wow. 400,000. They come in all shapes, colors, sizes. I want everybody to get a look here. Isn't that incredible? Even here in North Carolina, we have some pretty incredible diversity of beetles. My favorite beetle, fireflies. Did y'all know that? Did y'all know that fireflies are beetles? I had to read that somewhere before I realized it. But we do have an incredible biological diversity here in North Carolina. This beetle that I'm showing off right now, though, Southeast Asian species, we, of course, have, you've heard of June bugs, for sure, here in North Carolina. That's what this is. This is a June beetle. They get a little bit bigger in the tropics. Do beetles have a positive role in the world? Because they seem to, you know, be an annoyance to me in my yard and garden. In your yard, garden. Nigel, uh, did you want to take that one on? Yeah, I mean... I think, like Chris said, there's over 400,000 different species of beetles, so you kind of find them everywhere in different types of environments. I mean, even like, uh, I mean, like on the, uh, the logo for this year with the dung beetle, I mean, they're really important because they get rid of all of the, 
the nasty stuff out of the fields, bury it in the soil, and that becomes organic matter. And then you get things like June beetles, which are pests. They eat your lawn and your plants and stuff. Right. So there's a whole variety. But overall, they do good. They all, they all have a role in nature. Okay. You know, they're food for something or they feed on something. So it's all part of the ecosystem that needs to be there. Why do they have to eat my roses? <laughs> like, what could be the possible purpose of that in the world? Darn it. So I'm curious. Well, this is great. Uh, so the beetles that you see, are they small, really bright, shiny? Yeah, green? the Japanese beetles. Yeah. yeah, the Japanese beetles. They're beautiful. See, I don't think they're supposed to be here. Right. No, those are introduced. Uh, I don't think they're from Japan, but they're definitely from, from Asia, probably Southeast Asia. <clears throat> so it's an introduced species. And often when you get introduced pests, they're much harder to control. Mm -hmm. There aren't the natural enemies that kind of deal with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course, here at Bugfest and at the Museum of Natural Sciences, we're all about ecology, sustainability, being green, taking care of the environment. Eating bugs is one way to do that, but critters like this have such important roles to play in our environment, our ecosystem, and especially promoting good bugs versus invasive or exotic species in our habitats. Yeah. So it looks like we've got plating going down. I'm going to check in with Chef Zuelli. Or Chef BJ, what do we have going down now? Well, right now, I'm still working on our um, banana foster pancakes. That's what was going to be our dessert. Um, right now, she's working with our entree. Um, what we have also is, um, we, have, we call it polenta. It's almost like a gritty um, sausage, but it's into a cake, and it's very filling, and it's also good at our restaurant with oxtail and everything. So here, we're going to try to incorporate it in our meal. and. We'll see how it goes. It should be great. While that's getting finished up, it looks like we've got plating going down with Chef Kyle and Chef Kevin. What is our entree? So we have a flank steak roulade with a goat lady goat cheese out of uh, Chapel Hill, I believe. Um, and then we made a pest o um, out of some of the mealworms. <laughs> Did you say pest o? <laughs> Very yeah, clever. <laughs> Very clever. But I'm bumped. So that's made out of the, uh, the June bugs, um, as well as the uh, mealworms that we received. Mm. Looks good, looks good. I hope they save some for me after the show. <laughs> I'm, oh, you've, yeah, yeah, okay, I've got a bite. And folks, if you're here watching live, stick around. If there's a couple extra bites, we might, uh, if anybody wants to try it, we might shop those around a little bit. So stick around. And I'm going to show off while they're finalizing their plating for our entrees. Take a look. Here, our grand prize for the Bugfest Critter Cook-Off. This is our trophy for 2019. It's impressive. Our utensil beetle. It's a new species just discovered by science. <laughs> <laughs> this trophy was actually built and designed by museum staffer Hugo Sanchez. Hugo, are you here? There he is back there. Give Hugo a round of applause. <laughs> He put this together. I mean, take a look at this. Wow. This is going to look really good hanging on the wall awesome. of one of our guest judges' restaurants. You know what that looks like? It resembles the beetle from that Indiana Jones movie at that dinner. Ah, yeah. Where they had sure to like, does. lick the custard out of it or right. whatever. It kind of oh looks gosh. like that. That's a good, good, good we don't reference. have any of those today, though, I'm right? I'm glad ours are a little smaller. <laughs> That's really funny. Yeah, none of... <laughs> Not quite one of those today. Of course, uh, if you've seen any of the promotional materials for Bugfest, the poster and the sort of theme beetle that we have is the very popular, very famous scarab beetle, also known as the dung beetle, mm -hmm. which we do have here in North Carolina as well. So there are posters for Bugfest hanging around, uh, which have got, got a just gorgeous photography. It's a great looking poster, and it's dung beetles. Because they're, again, like the rest of these critters, they're actually vital, they have important roles in our ecosystem, and they're native to North Carolina, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was actually disappointed. I thought we were going to get dung beetles for you. Oh, okay. okay. Well, sorry. <laughs> so I just said I was kind of disappointed. I thought we were going to get dung beetles to eat when I saw the poster. <laughs> so June beetles is kind of. It seems they're a little hard to source at least in this part of the world. We would have had to have gone out and caught those ourselves, I think. No, and then you might you. not want them to have eaten them. No. Yeah. 
delicious looking food going down. One of my favorite things is that it, everything that comes out looks like something you'd get on a restaurant menu. Right. It really the does. The chefs do such an incredible job mm -hmm. and they put so much talent and effort and skill into creating dishes that look great, taste great. The creativity is endless. How long has Bugfest been going on? This is the 20, I'm looking for my support. This is the 23rd, 24th, 24th annual Bugfest. I, I've probably been to like 15 of them over the years and it's amazing to me to see, to your point, how the chefs like step it up every single year too. It's a really beautiful presentation. And Thank you. Great, thank you very much. Our entrees from Chef Zueli at Zueli's Kitchen in Durham are down on the table. Judges, first reactions, what do you think? It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's a lot of worms. The a plate, lot of worms. The plates are gorgeous. Presentation is a lot really of worms. Yes. What are the insects in this dish besides the worms? I mean, what do we have exactly? So what insects do we have in our entree, <laughs> Chef Zueli? Eat, eat first, Bill, then know. you ask questions. Well, I think I know what this we is. Have, it looks um, like an olive. <laughs> it's, not. it's not an olive. <laughs> we, have the, we have our pickled fiddles. So we had to pickle them first uh, for about an hour and then um, deconstruct them. And then we also have the mealworms, superworms. Yes. That we roasted first, and then we mix them with uh, a tomato sauce. First bites are going down. Going first. I was waiting for you. Pickled <laughs> beetles. I have, have one of my olives. So the protein here is all coming from the insects. Yes, that's all that's the really protein. interesting. Yeah. Yes. Hmm. Oh, and then there's bait. Is it bacon? Bacon. Yes. From the pig? <laughs> I don't I don't think it's insect bacon. <laughs> no. Oh wow, that's good. Mm, what do we think? That's really good. I can't chew my olive. <laughs> <laughs> Once you get the legs out of the way, it's fun. There are legs in here? They're good. <laughs> they're very crunchy. Mm -hmm. I they were just little body parts. Want to try one? How about our audience here? What are you thinking so far? Who of you, how many of you have actually eaten insects before? Right. So, yep, yep, lots of hands going up. Okay, that's great. That's why you came to the Insect Critter Cook-Off. You're like, oh, this is my jam. I'm going to go to that show. How many of you have not but would okay. want to try some? Because I've got the perfect opportunity for you. Tomorrow, Saturday, 9 to 7, come to Bugfest here at the Museum of Natural Sciences. Out on the pedestrian plaza, we'll also have eight local chefs preparing bug food for everybody to try. They'll be serving up almost all day long. Get in line in Cafe Insecta. Grab a bite from all of the different chefs. You can try all kinds of great tasting food tomorrow at Bugfest. I cannot enjoy this alone. It must be shared with the public. <laughs> it's amazing, it's right? Amazing. It's really tasty. It's just like a southern dish that you would mm -hmm. almost like you home cooked. Try? It's great. Go ahead. Go ahead. Try? Can we critique or not? Be my guest. Well, I was going to say, I love the, the pancake and the, the mealworms and the tomatoes are awesome. I'm having problems trying to chew my black olives, which I know are beetles. That they're is, they're beetles hard to chew. Tough, I mean, they're, they're very... You're like you're chewing, it's almost like you've got, not skin, like a shell. It's, it's the exoskeleton, right, that's, of the that, beetle? Is that what we're chewing? Yeah, that, that's yeah. the outside bit. Really yeah. tough. It's really, hard to, it's really hard to chew down. Oh, that's the thorax, yeah. Bill. That's okay. the thorax that you're having difficulty <laughs> chewing. But the mealworm, I'm becoming a fan of mealworms. Right? They're just, yeah, I mean, you're, here, if you'd like, you can try them raw. No, no. Okay. Mm -hmm. be, you can be my guest. Yeah, I'll, I'll just look at them. In case. I just in case. That is a uh, <laughs> beetle right there. You gotta get some worms in there, Victoria. You gotta, you're gonna do it. Go hard. You wanna try? No? Nobody? It's really good. Did they make that in St. Louis? I haven't touched that song. No? It's a, it's a no. fresh new form. So these are the beetles. While our chefs are working on the dishes, I also want to thank the sponsors for Bugfest. Terminex, 
and BASF every year have come out to support Bugfest and the Bugfest crew cook off and be a part of what we're doing here at the museum. Can we give our sponsors a round of applause? They help us make sure that we put on the best event that we can every single year. More than 30,000 people will be at Bugfest tomorrow. You want, definitely want to be among them. It's, it's the coolest event that happens in Raleigh. Whatever you like to go do in Raleigh, Bugfest tops it, I promise. This is the best thing that you could do on a Saturday morning and afternoon is visit us here at the museum. So it looks like oh, okay. so where, where Y Hill Kitchen and Brewery's entrees are going down. Oh, okay. Okay. What's a super worm? The super worm were the larger ones. These? Those guys, okay. Kyle, I'll check in with you. We'll, let's, get it, uh, let's get it on mic. What have we got for your entree? <laughs> so <clears throat> on the bottom, we have a beetle and red wine jus. So again, we use those beetles to steep um, in a red wine jus, uh, beef jus, as we were making so that. Um, it's a potato puree. And then that pesto, which is made from green sorrel, pea shoots, um, as well as the beetles and the super worms. It's got some goat lady goat cheese as well rolled up. And then the crumb is made out of uh, herbs, panko, crickets, and superworms as well. And then we added a little bit of pea shoots to emulate some grass and some of the superworms crawling through that as well as the smoked uh, crawling. peppers. Crawling through that? Yes. Enjoy. <laughs> wow. Okay, that's pretty incredible. Wait, let me grab a Looks great. Looks good from my end. Get one for the gram and then dive in, everybody. Thank you so much. I haven't gotten to taste anything yet, but I'm going to go ahead and say the banana fosters down here for dessert, that's got my name on it. And I'm not sharing it with anybody. Nobody laughed at that one. Okay. That's it. Mm, this soup one's really lovely. It is. Mm. This one's more like dinner than lunch. There's a lot to eat. Maybe that's the hardest part of judging a cooking contest, is knowing exactly how much to eat so that you don't get too full. Because you've got two more plates coming. I had to learn to pace myself after I finished the first one. It's so hard because you want to eat the whole thing. When the food is this good, right? Are there any more knives? Do we have knives? Mine has, oh, I found it. Never mind. Let's see if I can get a... Buggy, buggy bite here. Sounds a bit hard to count. Now, should we eat the garnish worms? Okay. Wait, what would make you think you can't eat the worms? <laughs> well, the you don't usually eat the garnishes, <laughs> but. If there are bugs on it, we want to see you eat the bugs. That's how the critter okay. cook off works. Oh, this is, these are crunchy. Oh, that's just doing it. It's I'm going for it. You got to go for it. Yes. And the, the pesto is really good. That's yeah. pest. Pest. Oh. Pest. Oh. Oh. Yeah. pest. <laughs> You're knocking them dead over here, Chef Kyle. We're trying. So not to get too far ahead, but it looks like we've got the desserts going down as well. Bugs, insects, the critter cook off. I couldn't the plastic knife. Let's poll the audience. How many of you, if you walked into a restaurant today and you saw insects on the menu, you saw one of these dishes, would say, yeah, I'm going for it. One, two, three, four, five, six out of 50. OK, OK. But uh, let's see, what, what would it take, what do you think it would take for you to decide to eat food with insects? Is it, is it presentation? Is it something else on the plate? I'm seeing nods for, yeah, presentation. Yeah, if you, maybe you trusted, like maybe you would go to Chef Kyle or Chef Zwelly now and be like, oh, they definitely know what they're doing. 
We can try that dish, maybe. Yeah, okay. Don't tell you. Okay. Don't just just put them in there and don't. But you'd say. be angry if you saw a bug on your plate, <laughs> and you didn't know there were supposed to be bugs on your plate. But but actually, that's a really good point about don't tell you because. Yep. Do you know there are FDA limits on the amount of bug parts you can have in food? Mm -hmm. So when you, eat, when you eat a bar of chocolate, there's at least eight bug parts in that bar of chocolate that have come in through the, through the ingredients that go into that, that bar. You just, you just don't, know, don't know. If you drink beer, if you drink a pint of beer, you're drinking two and a half thousand aphids in your pint of beer. Two and a so half they, thousand they, aphids. Right, huh. right. That is, uh, so the hops, they actually, um, yeah, they're... Uh, the aphids love, love hops, so a lot of the, hop, the aphids feed on the hops, so when they go into processing, they don't take the aphids off. They all just get in the vat and huh. get brewed. Just worked right else. in. Yeah. Wow. So you're always eating insects, you just don't realize it. Huh. My favorite part about wow. that is that there's a limit to how many there can be, uh -huh. which means that in everything we eat and drink, there's probably a little bit. Yeah. It's just not enough to really <laughs> yeah. let us it know. Hurt you. And I've even heard there's, there's been some new talk and some new research recently that uh, when it comes to eating insects, the number one thing that would get people to eat insects more is that it's simply in tasty food. That if it's something that we want, if you have a delicious chocolate chip cookie made with cricket powder, and you know it had cricket powder, then you'll want your chocolate chip cookies made with cricket powder from then on. And it becomes something that we desire, something we want, and then we get the increase in this sustainable source of food yeah. all the way around versus, say, uh, the environmental impacts, right. right? Going green doesn't necessarily motivate a lot of folks, but if it's something you really want because your taste buds are screaming, they want that, uh, we get a lot more folks to eat insects as well. All right, thank you. Now, this is a different order. Okay. It's fine. Oh, my goodness. I need more room. Thank you. Need more time? Yeah. <laughs> We designed this dessert kind of around that uh, old school feeling of uh, Jurassic Park in the original one, um, where it has the mosquito lodged in the amber, and they pull that out to recreate the rest of the dinosaurs. Um, so we have a superworm and graham cracker crumb, kind of to emulate some sand in an archaeological site, uh, sweet potato caramel, and then a cheesecake panna cotta, and then we have the amber um, beetle wing shards. Um, so that's going to be some sugar glass with Wait, the, the June oh, bug beetles. So they're in the... Oh, yes, ma'am. Wow. Yeah, real legit. So we'll just come across. And this okay. Is oh, really powder. Powder. okay. Oh, go. Just like you crack it. Oh, cool. Thank you. Wait, wait, wait. I have to take my picture. Okay. I've got to do it for the gram. Getting any of this. <laughs> this is all mine. <laughs> <laughs> It looks like our chef, so the last dessert just went out from Y Hill Kitchen. It looks like the last dessert is finished and ready to go out from Zwelly's Kitchen. And I'm looking at the clock. Five, four, three, two, one, and that's time. Give our chefs a round of applause. They nailed it without a problem. 50 minutes of cooking, bugs and delicious tasty treats nonstop. Fantastic job by everyone. Oh, wow. <laughs> Great. She got the bigger bugs. <laughs> Caroline got the bigger bugs. Yeah, you can see the bugs oh. in this one. Oh, oh my gosh. They're huge. <laughs> Juicy crickets. Can you turn them around? Take one of those. Thank you. come down here. Picture. Chef Zwelly, tell us about your dessert. So our dessert is a cricket flour uh, pancake uh, with a banana fossil sauce 
and um, a caramel salted uh, cricket on top. Caramel salted crickets, mm. cricket flour pancake, and oh gosh. And banana. Oh, my sounds good, God. right? You with me? Yeah, that one sounds really good. I hope there's an extra bite of that one for me somewhere. That's so we have to I'm eat the cricket to. separate to get the caramel saltedness, I guess, right? Yes. Yes. You yes. can just take it and put it in your mouth by itself. Mm -hmm. that, yeah, it's great. It's huge. Mm -hmm. Really good. <laughs> Thank mm. you. Yeah. Thumbs up from the scientist. Yeah. Bill is complaining because his crickets are smaller. No, than I'm <laughs> delighted. <laughs> it might, we, we might have some larger pieces. We can, can I take his antenna off before I put him in my mouth? Mm, let's no. Oh my audience, God. what do you think? Should that he remove the antenna? That pancake is really, really good. Um, do you mind if we interview So that pancake is made entirely with cricket okay. flour? Yes, it's um, two-thirds cricket flour. All right. And then a third of Crickets just are better the, than beetles. Just oh for the weight and so many the um, You the know what? You can taste... Because I've been doing this for so long, and I recognize the taste of crickets, you can taste the the crickety part on the back end right. of the pancake. It's actually really good. It's, I it's delicious. That. That mm. I like crickets. So I good. I like it better than beetles. Yeah. Oh, gosh, yes. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. More nutty. Yeah. 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 Like so it, you said two-thirds cricket flour, one-third regular yeah. all-purpose flour. How did you work out the ratios? Because flour has a lot of protein in it, and you have to get those ratios right for, for baking mm. and making sweet treats. What I was looking for in the flour is just the gluten, so the cricket uh, flour could stick, so the pancake could stick together pretty much. And what we did to the cricket is we roasted it for about three hours uh, at 200 degrees, and after we roasted it, we just put it in a food processor and we started processing it into in just a powder. I love the creativity. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna just go for it. So tell us again, that we, what is in this one, uh, bug-wise, besides the wings? The pancake dessert, the banana foster. Uh, super worms in the graham cracker crumb as well. Oh. So we toasted and roasted those and then blended them with the graham cracker crust to kind of emulate the outside of cheesecake. And the only thing I can tell that is a bug are the wings. Yeah. And they don't really chew, so they're kind of yeah. sit on your tongue. I told you, don't really the, have the wings taste, and the legs but. are the ones that get you. It's yeah. if you pull those off, you could just they throw don't taste back bad. all day. Yeah, they just kind of stay in your mouth. So here's an idea. Maybe next year, next year we could work in wine pairings mm. <laughs> or beer. He or did the beer, beer batter. <laughs> I mean. I think that it Chef would take Kyle, the judging to the next level. level. Get our level one out. sommelier? Yes. Yep. Do you remember so, one year we did, we, did, we did get a shot of something one year? It was like a... A couple of years ago, yeah. yeah. A couple of years what ago. One of the chefs yeah. brought in. Yeah. I don't remember what it was now, unfortunately. It wasn't very alcoholic, I remember, unfortunately. No, but. I think it has to be alcoholic, really, <laughs> it does, yeah. to make it all work. <laughs> Wait, how many of you have to go on air after this show? <laughs> Everybody. Yeah. I'm going to have a great show this afternoon. It's going to be amazing. Actually, Elizabeth Gardner is here, and she's going on live on WRAL in just a couple of minutes. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, judges, uh, we've got five more minutes. If you can, finalize your scores. Tabulate your totals at the bottom there for us, and then we will quickly discover... Who the winner is of the 2019 Bugfest Critter Cook-Off. Now, you have all journalism people over here, and you're telling us that you want us to do math? <laughs> yeah, I'm a scientist. Oh, he's a scientist. Sorry. <laughs> Look, I, I, there's at least one scientist. <laughs> <laughs> Two scientists. Entomology, meteorology. Yeah, that's true. Oh, we have to do the math? Yeah, we have to <laughs> we do, the have math. do the math. See? If it helps, each category. So judges, um, we're rating the dishes here, on a scale right? of one to five. One, nope, not touching it ever again. Five, die happy. Had the best meal of my life. One to five. And they're judging on taste, originality, and presentation. For the appetizer, entree, and dessert, that means there's a total of 45 points available for each chef across each category.
While we're counting, I want to chat with some of our audience members. So what do you think about eating critters? It would be good. You think it would be good? Should I, would you like to try one of these bites over here? I think it would, let's see. Chef, uh, Chef Kyle, let's see, what have you got? Flank steak, and then we also have the panna cotta. Which one you want? Flank steak, come on over, take a look. Flank steak, panna cotta. Grab a bite. That one. There you go. I've got extra utensils somewhere. I want to remind everybody, too, uh, we've got Cafe Insecta with our eight local chefs will be happening tomorrow until 5 o'clock. And then from 5 to set until 3 o'clock, Cafe Insecta until 3 o'clock. But then, beginning at 5 o'clock, it'll be bug bites prepared by the museum's own chief of research and collections, Jason Cryan, who himself is an entomologist here with the museum. He's actually discovered himself lots of cool critters. He's going to be preparing special food just for all our visitors. Okay, what do you think? It's really good. Yeah. It's really good. Good for her. <laughs> nice. Here, let's turn right here. We're going to look right in that camera. Yeah, it's really tasty. <laughs> there we go. All right. Give me just one moment, everybody. We're going to collect the judges' scorecards, and then we're going to announce the winner of the Bugfest Critter Cook-Off. <clears throat> Luckily, I have a third grader, so I was able to do common core math to figure out okay. how to add all that up. Sorry, I've got bugs on my paper. you got bugs on your scorecard. Yeah. You? Points off oh, for the judges. That's good. Sorry, I waited till the end to do mine. No so worries. You have a scientist sitting beside you that can do that math. No, I just waited to write mine down <laughs> till the end. You want some more, Victoria? Mm. Say something. Oh, yeah. I don't have any utensils, though. You ate all the. Um, yes. I ate all the crickets. Yeah. Yeah. There's no Sorry. crickets. Right. Yeah. No. Well, there might be something in there. I ate the crickets. You can tell the Right. You're right. There were bugs in there, and then in the flower, that in the graham cracker, um, there were bugs ground up in there. I'm actually eating another bite of this. And then in the, the flower without the, the two-thirds. Well, I mean, I took a little wing, but... Okay. So it's the dry wings. Yeah. yeah. I got flour in there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, and I like this. It's fine. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, folks of all ages, it is time now to announce the winner of the 2019 Bugfest Critter Cook-Off. Could, could Chef Swelly, Chef VJ, Chef Kyle, Chef Kevin, come around to the front here, join me. Y'all give these four chefs a round of applause. The creativity, the passion. I'm mostly just excited they agreed to do this in the first place, to take a leap out, come to the museum, visit us here in downtown Raleigh and be a part of the cook-off. We do have a winner, though. One chef team has reigned supreme today here at the 2019 Bugfest Critter Cook-Off, and we'll take home to their restaurant this wonderful plaque to hang on their walls for all to see. By the thinnest of margins, our winner today is Y Hill Kitchen and Brewery. Thank you. Chefs, thank you so much for being here. Thanks to all of you for coming out and watching the Bugfest Critter Cook-Off. We will see you at Bugfest tomorrow, September 21st, beginning at 9 a.m. More than 100 games, crafts, exhibits, and vendors for you to check out here at the museum for North America's largest single-day celebration of all things bugs. Have a great day, everybody. We will see you tomorrow at Bugfest.
I hit a straight curve. <clears throat> you it wasn't too bad, and I like it.